right, guys, welcome to lesson two. In lesson one, we talked about form, a commanding presence, a countenance, and our overall appearance. Before we can even start to do anything, we have to have that form set, okay? Our core uh, positioning has to be set, and our commanding presence, our authoritative presence, okay, has to um, already be set before we can even move muscle. All right, so that's what lesson one covered. I wish I could see you all in a normal workshop. I would come up to you guys. I would help position you. I would help you feel the correct positioning. I really hate that I can't do that. So what I would love to see, I would love to see you guys um, maybe snap a picture, have someone snap a picture of you guys in your ready position. All right, from lesson one, we learned toes and heels are already together. It brings the eye upward into our hands, which is where our conducting pattern lives in the hands, okay, nowhere else, always in the hands and the fingertips. And we learned uh, some again, chest out, shoulders back, shoulder to elbow relaxed, hands curved and uh, fingers toward the band, thumbs relaxed and toward the band, chin always up. And we learned that our movement comes from here. And we also learned where our tabletop is. Now, tabletop is a word we use an awful lot and every single beat is placed on the tabletop. Well, you might ask, well, um, if all the beats are placed on the tabletop, how do you know which beat is which? The simple answer is it's where the beat comes from or how you get there, the angle at which you approach the tabletop, okay? So everyone go to their ready position, okay? Chin up, tabletop, okay? And we're going to discuss lift, okay? Or prep and beat one. Forever and ever and ever, amen, beat one, no matter what time signature you're in, what style of music, it doesn't matter. All the world over, beat one is always straight down, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to tap the tabletop right down the shoulder line, okay, with our fingertips. We're gonna move from the elbow down, okay? We're gonna lift and tap straight down not at an angle, not from here, but straight up and straight down. When you lift off of your tabletop, again, make sure that you don't crunch up and that your elbows are where the movement is coming from. And when you come up, no praise hands, okay? We want the fingertips to stay toward the band. I want you to imagine a string tied to the end of your finger going out toward the band, okay? This is how you communicate at all times, the fingertips always toward the band, okay? so. Again, go to ready position, come right up the shoulder line, keeping the fingers toward the band, and tap the tabletop. Tap. Okay, try that. One, two, three, up, tap. Do it again. One, two, three, up, tap. Now, if you'll notice, my elbows didn't move around, okay? They didn't float around. My shoulders didn't move. They were still and stable, okay? I didn't crunch anything up. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, and tap. Do it again. One, two, three, and tap. Make sure you're hitting that tabletop at the exact same level, at the exact same spot every single time. Beat one is your bread and butter. Beat one is what keeps everything going, keeps everyone together. It, it's the glue, it's the most important beat. End of the story. It has to be stable, consistent. You have to be confident in it. The band has to be able to read it. If they read nothing else, you have to be able to read beat one. End of story. So we're gonna spend a fair amount of time on it because it is the most important thing that you do, period, okay? All right, so let's try that again. Ready position, chin up, okay? Hands on the tabletop, fingertip toward the band. One, two, three, lift, tap. Do it again, one, two, three, lift, tap. Do it again. One, two, three, lift, tap. Now I keep saying the word tap, and that's because I want you to take the fingertip. Remember we said they were slightly bent. You see that? Okay. One, two, three, lift, tap. If you'll see the fingertip strikes the tabletop, the imaginary tabletop, tap with the fingertip. You don't flatten the hands. You don't slap it. We don't go below it and rebound up. Okay. You just tap it with the fingers. It's a gentle movement. There's a misconception that if you have loud music or marching band music or a big band, you have to have 
hard muscle movements. You have to strain in order to get your point across. That is not the case at all. Conducting in an effective and clear way is all about communicating. And you can do that without straining. It's all about the choices in movement that you make. Your energy must be used in the right way to make it through shows like we produce. So it's very important right now that you understand where your support comes from when you tap, okay? The movement comes from here. Like I said, this is still and relaxed. But the core, the support, just like when we march, when we say lift up an inch, we're talking about engaging these muscles. But in conducting, it's more important to understand that you're engaging these muscles in your back right here. You can feel them, okay? If you were to, it's very difficult. If we were in a workshop, I would put my thumbs right on those two muscles in the back that I was talking about. And as you conducted with my thumbs at your back, you would be able to really feel how they engage as you conduct. It's very important, very important that as you tap, okay, you're thinking of your form, you're thinking of your tabletop, you're thinking of your fingertips, and you're thinking of this core support, okay? Like, not unlike a tree, this, branch, this trunk has to be supportive and these are the branches that get to move around in the wind, okay? This cannot disengage and engage, disengage and engage, and you can't, under any circumstances, support the branches, your conducting arms from above. You ever seen a marionette, one of those puppets that people have on strings? If you watch uh, conducting videos of other high school conductors, you'll see that the best ones have a completely relaxed neck and shoulder. The ones who struggle are the ones who try to support it from the top. And you'll see their shoulders move a lot. You'll see a lot of this, okay? They're trying to do the marionette support. They're supporting from the top down as opposed from the bottom up. Number one, this is very distracting because it takes the beat and the movement away from the fingertips, the bandies have one place to look, guys, and it starts to move it all around up here. You, the band doesn't know where to look because you have all these other movements going on. The movement needs to be here. They need to have one safe place to look to find the tempo and the beat, okay? Also, it's extremely uh, damaging. It's painful, it wears the muscles out, and you can actually cause real damage to uh, nerves and muscles up in the neck and the shoulder area. I have um, dealt with students many times who have had this problem. I often get called in from other schools to say, help, come rescue my drum major. We have two weeks till state festival and you know we need help. Or I'll get a call, you know, it's the second week of school, my drum major needs routines. Not all schools have drum major coaches, as a matter of fact, very few do. Only the big ones usually do. So I get called a lot, come do a one day thing and rescue my drum major. And nine times out of 10, those kids are hurting. They can't get through the show. They can't effectively execute a routine because their support system is wrong. So right now, think about engaging this course, especially those muscles in the back. Go back to ready position, find your tabletop, chin up. Okay, and this time I wanna tap that tabletop, beat one, straight down the shoulder line four times, okay? One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, four. Now, every single time you hit that tabletop, the hands should be in the same place. They should not travel away from that spot. One is in the same place every time. I'm gonna say it a hundred times. Keep your chin up, relax the shoulders. One is in the same place every time and straight down. Don't move the tabletop. I'm gonna say that a hundred times. If you are doing these exercises, if you're practicing hitting the tabletop, and we're gonna talk about exercises in just a moment. If you are doing that and you're struggling to hit the tabletop in the same place every time, I have some tools for you. Take a piece of tape or a dry erase marker and go on your mirror and take a ruler and make a straight line and make a tabletop for yourself so that as you're practicing in the mirror, you hit that tabletop consistently every time until you can feel it without that help. Also, what you can do is use a bar stool, the back of a chair. Um, you can kneel down and use the uh, bed, whatever works for you, whatever you have in your home that is comfortably at that level, your tabletop, and practice tapping it. Tap, tap, tap. Now, most people get really frustrated at this stage. They think, I'm going to conduct. I'm ready to conduct some music. I want to learn some cool cues. I want to be drum major. 
this is not fun at all. If you cannot do this, you can't do anything else. So trust me, I need this to be 100% stable and solid, okay? So, homework. I want you guys to practice looking in the mirror, continue to work on your form, focus on engaging the core, particularly the muscles down in the center of the back, and then the core here. Practice on keeping the shoulders relaxed, okay? Chin up, and I want you to tie that string to the end of your fingers out toward the band, okay? And I want you to practice going and one. That's it. Stop, look in the mirror, and check to make sure you're on your tabletop, Make sure your hands went straight down your shoulder line. Make sure the fingertips are toward the band. Make sure you didn't change the shape of your hands, okay? Make sure you didn't move the elbows, meaning have them floating around here like this. Make sure your shoulders didn't move or get tense. Check yourself, in other words, okay? The ability to evaluate oneself is a major mark of maturity and the ability to progress and grow. And that's what I need you to do right now since we're doing all this remotely, okay? So in the mirror, check all those things, lift, stop, check yourself. Lift, stop, check yourself. Then when you feel comfortable with that, I want you to practice tapping that tabletop in multiples, two, then four, then eight, then 16, however many, and make sure they're consistent. So one, two, Okay, that looked pretty good. I feel okay with that. Okay, and if you didn't, then go back to one and get it right. Okay, we only add multiples when we can do the singulars, uh, the singles perfectly. Okay, so then four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then you can add from there. Being able to tap that tabletop is a massively important thing to do. Okay, so. I know this was kind of a long lesson on tabletop and beat one, um, but it's really important. I once um, got uh, hired at a school to take care of drum majors during a band camp, and it was two drum majors, and they had never worked with a partner before. And we honestly spent two and a half days getting them to tap beat one correctly, have proper form, and be in sync. So um, it takes time. Be easy on yourself, adjust as needed, send me any questions you have, but get that beat one 100% solid so that we can move on from there. Every step is a shorter and faster step from here. What does that mean? That means once you have mastered this, once you have your form, your tabletop, and your tapping beat one correctly, learning the other beats goes like this. Learning the cues goes even faster. Learning the routine goes even faster than that. So trust me, spend some time on this and uh, get it solid and then you can skip on to the next video where we're going to talk about beats two, three, and four in four, four time. Okay, good luck guys.